So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what is going to be a very interesting, very funny, uh, it's just going to be a huge throwback, this video. And what I'm doing in this video is I'm actually going over some of my early proposals, some of the early, yeah, I don't know how else to phrase it, some of the early proposals I sent out to clients after our first meeting, after I went ahead, reached out to a bunch of clients, secured the meetings, and then went ahead and sent the proposal. And first things first, basically in this, I do everything that I tell my students not to do, that I'm so vehemently against these days. So yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a real, real throwback. So first things first, uh, I'll leave like timestamps. The reason I found this, cause obviously it's been almost like three and a half years since all of these proposals is uh, my iCloud, it was backed up to Al uh, iCloud and then it was on my desktop and then it was in the folders of my desktop. So. Yeah, I'll go ahead and leave the date stamps, like you can see the last edited on, um, just so you can see that these are actually from three and a half years ago. I found these, like I found the skin yoga one, um, maybe like a couple days back. Uh, and then this first proposal to my football club, the first ever client I signed, um, that I found that I found a while back, but then I started finding all these other ones and um, just thought I'd make a video because it's just hilarious. I just want to... To be honest, I just want to make this video just to laugh at myself and just kind of reminisce on how much has happened since this point. Um, now, before we get into this video, quick heads up. I'm wearing the Youth Never Satisfied hoodie. This isn't actually what the final product looks like. The final product has the raised finished um, and just a couple, couple different things are mended. Heads up, this is running really low on stock. We restocked it for the last final time. So once this final stock sells out, it will never be available again. Uh, the way we do it is uh, with Gadget, my clothing line is, you know, seasons and then occasionally we'll do restocks of products that are selling really well. Um, but the season will never last more than like four months. So this is coming to an end. A new season is dawning upon us very, very shortly, uh, or at least within the next couple months. Um, so yes, this hoodie, which I literally live in, I love this thing so much. You know, uh, I've said this time and time again, like I've traveled to multiple countries with this thing. I've closed clients in this thing, not with the hood up though. Uh, I've closed clients in this thing. I've gone to gym in this thing. I've like, you know, I've been on dates in this. Like I've literally like slept and just lived and just been, yeah, just, I, I love this thing so much. I just can't say better things, but um, yeah, last chance to get it. Uh, go ahead, click the link in the description before, as I said, this final stock sells out and then we're done with this season forever. So. On that note, let's get straight into it. So there's four proposals I'm gonna show you. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna have a good laugh. Uh, I'm gonna laugh at myself and just tell you, I guess maybe what things I would do differently. So let's get straight into it. So this first proposal is for the first client I ever signed. Um, Instagram platforms that, uh, Instagram is a platform I absolutely know and dominate, blah, blah. Uh, I would put anywhere from two to four photos a week, blah, blah. So uh, look, at the bottom here, we've got um, two posts plus engagement plus growth, 15 pounds a week. <laughs> Keep in mind, I was curating this content as well. So I was literally potentially gonna charge this client 60 pounds a month to create, you know, to do like a photo shoot and then create those two posts and uh, match growth and stuff like that. Then we've got four posts plus engagement plus growth, 25 pounds a week, uh, blah, blah. Um, Facebook is the platform we're gonna hit hardest in order to attract uh, people to the club. Parents pay for the fees, not the kids, blah, blah, this, that. Um, not much interesting stuff there. Uh, only thing is, as I said, seven posts plus engagement plus growth, 20 pounds a week. Snapchat, so at this point I was actually managing their Snapchat. Uh, set up grow audience plus masterclass booklet. And I have no idea what the masterclass booklet was. Uh, I just thought I could make fancy sounding things. Um, basically what it was is just kind of like, I would make an instructional PDF just to send to the team. Because the thing is um, their, their members, or sorry, their um, team members would have to manage the Snapchat because it's something you have to do in the moment. Um, so I don't know, I just thought I'd make a, a masterclass booklet, whatever the hell that is. Um, and then Twitter, <laughs> okay, Twitter is a platform that squeezed that is being squeezed by Facebook and Instagram. Uh, oh, okay, so he, at least I had the common sense not to do Twitter for this client. Uh, YouTube, um, Jesus, wow. Um, guaranteed weekly growth plus search engine optimization, um, movie slash project. So I would charge five to 20 pounds for a movie slash project. Wow, um, I can get campaigns for trial, ensure the pants are at ease with the coaches through a meet our coach series. 
Uh, we can provide so much value recording five part mini series on set pieces, etc. Um, but here's the kind of like where the juicy stuff comes in. I hate constraints. Trust me, I'm not the type of person where you'll, well, where you'll be chasing after me to provide value or keep working. I'll be constantly finding new ways to grow the club's social media presence, to mold the club's brand and get the word out there, which will result in more signings, which will lead to more revenue for you. My ultimate proposal is a weekly fee of 75 pounds. For that price, you'll get all the top package, packages listed on Instagram, weekly growth as well as four posts a week. You can just kind of read through there. Um, uh, I will get 100 to 200 people following it within the first two weeks. At the end of the day, not having a strong social media is losing money and weakening RPFC's brand. It's something you need to sort out. And if you go to an agency, they'll quote you hundreds of pounds a week. That is very true. I can tell you that now, except sometimes a thousand pounds a week or a couple thousand pounds a week depends on the size of agency you're going to. Keep in mind, I was doing, I was being a full service agency for, for this first client. So not very unrealis unrealistic for someone to charge 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 a week. Some of these uh, bigger scale uh, uh, full service agencies, considering the amount of work I'm doing for this. Uh, blah, blah. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. Ultimate proposal. Uh, oh, okay, so, so just the main thing we need to focus on here. I signed this client for 75. <laughs> uh, 75 pounds a week. And um, that was my first ever clan, and it was August of 2016. Um, so, hey, we all have to start somewhere, and this is where I started. So I've said this story quite a few times, so I don't think there's much else that I want to talk about in, 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 this, uh, in that portion. The next one is a company called Skin Yoga. So let's get into it. So at this point, uh, this is probably three months on from... Um, Three months on from signing my first client, I've been reaching out to clients, this, that, setting meetings, nothing's looking promising. Um, so at this point, I wouldn't say cocky, but I'm, I feel more confident about myself for sure, uh, which is why you'll see Instagram content distribution and account management, 150 pounds a week. So um, uh, blah, blah. Um, I actually managed there. Uh, I actually me uh, mentioned there, the thing is so few companies care out there. Most Fortune 500 companies out there have never replied to a tweet they've been mentioning. What sort of company, what sort of message are we sending out if we don't reply to our own customers? Well, that would be part of the job as the account manager. We've already sat down and have a clear blah, blah. Uh, that's why the company's social media grows. So the thing that, the thing that I kind of want to, like there's obviously a lot to digest here, but the thing that I want to go over is the fact that I'm literally telling this client, not only will I um, manage the account, distribute the content, grow it, but I'm also basically going to be customer service and respond to comments and questions. And basically, I'm now customer service as well. Um, and this is the thing that so many agency owners out there do when they first start is they stack, they stack a bunch of shit that the person doesn't want. Like your client doesn't want all of this extra shit. They just want the thing that will get them the result. And this is what I didn't understand when I first started with an agency was I just thought, okay, if I can add as many, if I can add a masterclass booklet, if I can add a basically be their customer support, if I can do all of this added stuff, surely that means that it warrants a higher retainer. No, because the thing is all the client wants is their result. And that result is for a lot of these clients, to be honest, for a lot of clients at these points, the result and the main result that I was giving them was increased social media reach, increased social media following, and, and you know, great content. That was mainly the pitch at that point. It wasn't so much like I'm going to bring, you know, there's no mention here of I'm going to bring you more customers. It, it's insinuated. It's insinuated and it's a byproduct of all the work that I was doing, but it wasn't something that I was kind of, you know, s selling per se. It wasn't a deliverable that I was selling, but my point is I just kept throwing in all this extra shit that I thought the client would want, but it, all it did was all it did all, was mask the fat, mask my insecurity, my insecurity and in how much that I was trying to price and how much I was trying to charge the client. So let's get on to it. Uh, account management and content creation. Ooh, we're at 300 pounds a week. So everything that uh, is included on the last page, uh, you can expect four to 800 new followers every week, build rapport, brand loyalty. Um, uh, at that point, I was actually starting to charge um, 150, 200 pounds an hour for videography. Um, so yeah, I was, I was doing freelance uh, work there. So you can see that mentioned there. Uh, blah, seven posts weekly. Um, why do I offer this service at such a cheap price? Because I want congruence. I want congruence between the message the company is trying to send and the content that is posted. If you decide to go for the first package, you have very little control over the message the content is sending. Unfortunately, blah, blah, we should be content. Okay, so I see what I'm trying to say here. Basically, the re I'm saying why is the second package 
you would imagine the second package because I'm curating all the content as well. The first package is basically 600 pounds a month. And I used to break it down into weekly fee because I thought that sounded better. <laughs> oh. I, lo I love looking back at some of this stuff. Like, honestly, this makes me so cringe and so happy at the same time. But I would break it down into weekly because I thought that was more manageable or I was more likely to sign the client. But anyways, I, I, the point that I was trying to make here was why is there such a... You would assume that if I'm charging 600 pounds for just repurposing content, managing and growing the channels, if I'm you know, uh, doing all of that, but I'm actually curating the content as well, you would imagine that I would charge more than 1.2K. And I'm saying here, the reason that I offer it such a cheap price, you know, the extra, the next tier or the next package is because I want your brand to be congruent to the content that we're posting. So what I mean by that is I want creative, um, I want creative reach. I want to be able to curate all the content uh, as well as distribute it and grow the channels and stuff like that, rather than having to just take random, just random uh, content out there. Uh, lastly, oh, I love this. Lastly, we'll be in constant communication. Um, there will be a time when you need an online campaign done. You already have to blah, blah, um, blah, blah, to use every client. Uh, this is true. Uh, it's software Lance, uh, built, uh, it's software Lance that's built when opting for this package. I hope that gives you a good idea of what each service offers and the importance of investing in your social media of world where people aren't watching TV ads anymore. They're on their phone flicking through Instagram feed. There's no binding contract involved. Okay. Uh, it's a weekly service fee that is invoiced to the company at the beginning of each month. Uh, if, for example, that after three months you decide you learn enough to delegate it to a team member or staff, you're no longer in need of service, then there's nothing binding you. Um, I would like to remind you that December is the busiest month of growth for an Instagram page out of the whole year. Um, okay. So once again, very interesting package um, or very interesting proposal. Couple things there. Um, I have no clarity on what, on what service the cl get on what service, what service uh, fulfills or or mitigates the client's pain point. Like I have no concept of what. Like I'm just trying to throw extra shit into these two packages. Like that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Just try to add as much value in there when that's not really what they want. The other thing that I'm trying to do here is um, the communication bit. Like I, oh man, like I've, oh, I remember there was this, this video I saw once. Um, there was this video I saw once and I just watched it and I just cringed so hard because I was like, this person has, you know, no disrespect to the person. Um, it was just a random video that came up on my recommended. Like it was just a, you know, no, no disrespect to the person. Um, I just, you know, what I will say is I would, I strongly disagree with the way they handle that objection. Um, they got an objection. I forget whether it was on a live call or, or they were just saying how they would deal with it. But the objection was like, why should we choose you over a larger agency? And their objection, the way they handle that objection is like, at a larger agency, you have to go through, you know, multiple points to get to, you know, the agency owner. Whereas with me, if you call me, I'll pick up. And I'm just like, that is the first fucking objection handling I've ever heard. Because if my client tried to pick me up, I would give them, uh, tried to call me. First of all, they couldn't because they don't know my number. And if they tried to, or if they tried to message me on Messenger or tried to email me or anything outside of Slack, I would, once, I would be polite the first one or two times. But once again, I would remind them, I made it very clear on the onboarding. This is how we do it. And it's for your benefit because that way, when we all keep it on one platform, all of our clients can get the fastest communication time possible. So if one of my clients tried to call me these days, and keep in mind, I didn't know what I was doing back then. This is like, this is me in my infancy stage as an agency owner, but never, at the kind of the point that I'm trying to make um, is never take pride in the fact that, never take pride or never try to sell the fact that you're on demand 24 seven. That is not, first of all, that shouldn't be a plus to your, you know, like the thing is like, I've had service provider stuff and stuff like that before for Grow Agency for uh, various aspects of the business operationally. Like, I don't need them to be on call 24 seven. Just if I send you a message within 24 hours out of courtesy, respond. Like for me, as long as you do that, like we're cool. You know, so never ever try to sell it as this positive or this plus or try to, you know, press on the fact that, um, try to press on the fact that, you know, you'll be on call 24 seven. Like that's how you become a slave to your agency. So 
that's one thing to note there. And once again, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm in my infancy. Like I'm in, you know, it's just, it's cute looking back over this. Um, but hopefully you guys can take some lessons out of it, especially if you're a beginning agency owner. Um, now, actually one thing that would be fun to note is did I actually get these clients? First one I signed, obviously that, my, that was my first ever client. The second client, Skin Yoga, didn't sign. Um, yeah, never, never signed him. I was looking very promising, but never signed him. Now this next client, David Lloyd, and you probably he, are, here are like, why are you pitching to David Lloyd? Their revenue is like, I'm pretty sure, I, I'm pretty sure the manager told me, that, the general manager told me that their marketing budget was 2 million a year. Cause they, they also, they have uh, gyms in like Holland, I know that for sure, and like other places in the world. And he told me their marketing budget was 2 million a year. Um, but this is back in like 2016. I don't know how much their revenue is, but they're definitely an eight figure a year company, like 100% has to be. Um, and yeah, the reason that I got in talks with them is, uh, the reason that I talk, uh, got in talks with them is basically, uh, sorry, I was just getting some Slack notifications there. Um, the general manager, the general manager at the branch that I went to. And, uh, once again, one of my, like my uh, best friend growing up, his family actually had a family plan and they put me on his family plan cause his sister moved away. So if you're watching this, lots of love, dude. Um, he was like my best friend growing up. So I got a nice fancy David Lloyd membership and didn't have to pay. Um, so that was very sweet of his family. But anyways, I was going to this gym and, uh, I was going to this gym and like, th that's the thing as an agency owner, you need to understand that if you go to a networking event, if you're at your gym, if you're at a restaurant, anywhere in the world, there's, in my opinion, there's two businesses where you are useful to anyone. And that's having an accounting firm because everyone needs an accountant and having a marketing agency. The thing is with an accounting firm, like, like, I don't know, I could have the, I, I could have the sickest accountant or like, I could have someone pitch me on uh, to be my accountant. And like, I wouldn't change my account. Like it's just too much hassle. Whereas an agency, it's not as much of a hassle. And a lot of times most, most businesses out there just aren't even doing any marketing or aren't working with an agency. They're just having some sloppy intern doing it in house. So the reason that I'm telling you this is because I started talking to, I, I don't know what happened, you know, over the past four years, I used to be a lot more charismatic. Um, to be honest, if you meet me these days, I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm very introverted. Like I think I'm naturally introverted. Uh, I used to be able to, I used to be, uh, really good at being able to step out of that shell and be extroverted at times. But these days, to be honest, like, I don't really like fight it or this or anything. Like I'm just, I'm a very low and not low energy, but I, I don't know how to describe it, but I'm not a very, uh, like I kind of like to stay to myself. I'm the person that when I go in a Uber, uh, I love this cause on, uh, Uber Lux and Uber execs, uh, or at least in London, you get to put quiet, like preference. Uh, and I always put quiet preferred. So, you know, I, I don't want to talk in an Uber. I want to like do some work or reply to some messages, but anyways, back to my point, which is, um, I started talking to the general manager about, um, what I did, um, growing Instagram accounts, uh, curating content, stuff like that. And that's actually how we actually had a meeting. And then from there I went ahead and curated this proposal. Uh, so I'll show you guys. So, uh, with the service, I'll be managing the club's Instagram account, uh, blah, blah, this is an engagement growth is very easy to measure. ROI isn't, uh, okay. Okay. This is interesting. Um, the second measurement of growth would be how many likes you get compared to the amount of followers you have. All right, man, this is known as engagement as quantified as a percentage. Growth is very easy to measure. ROI is not asking what the ROI of an online platform is like asking what the ROI of a friendship to the club, social media. We're trying to build brand loyalty and spread awareness. I don't want to see someone in Germany flying into London for a weekend to end up at another gym simply because they have a social media presence and we don't. I love how we, I use we as inclusive. The gym is amazing. Now let's spread the word, blah, blah. Um, I do like the fact here that I set the expectation that this isn't an ROI driven service. Um, we're opt like, I made it clear what KPI we're, we were optimizing for, which was growth, um, growth, uh, engagement, et cetera, et cetera. I like the fact that I did that. The thing is few companies care out there. Uh, Ooh, I use a canned response. You're terrible. Ivan. <laughs> I talk about, I, I say the same thing I said for skin yoga, uh, about, you know, not responding. And once again, here I am trying to make myself a company's customer support team and responding to comments and 
concerns and stuff like that on Instagram. So Instagram and other platforms. So anyways, uh, in terms of content, uh, so once again, in this package, and this is the package that I never wanted people to get the 150 a week. So 600 pounds a month. Cause I always say in terms of content, I would simply have to re uh, redistribute photos already taken by gym members that have posted on Instagram and geotag David Lloyd. Not ideal, but the club will still definitely be able to grow with this limitation. Most of the time I would make this one out to be really, really shit uh, because Obviously I wanted people to get the account management and content creation. So, um, uh, kind of similar to the last one, uh, I talk about, I, I flex on them with how much I'm charging at that time for, uh, my videography and photography services. Uh, I mentioned this will be much better than iPhone photos. Oh, once again, canned response. I want congruence. Oh, even you're terrible, terrible. I, sh I really should have, um, I really should have, uh, gone ahead and, and, and done a uh, actual bespoke, uh, bespoke proposals here. But, uh, lastly, we'll be in constant communication. Wow. All right. Yeah, man. You, you could have put a bit more creativity into this. Um, all right. Once again, very interesting. So it seems like I pretty much just took the exact same proposal from the previous company and just slapped on David Lloyd. So didn't get the client. So I'm guess I'm, uh, you know, looking back, I'm, I'm glad I didn't go out of my, uh, out of my way to make a entirely new one. So, yeah, that was David Lloyd, and that was my very, very um, cute attempt at signing David Lloyd as a client um, when they make eight figures, probably multiple eight figures a year, considering they have a marketing budget of two million a year. Um, so yeah, very, very cute attempt on my part. That said, this actually did get a decent way down the, the, the pipeline, and the thing is, this was for one specific branch. This was, wasn't for all of David Lloyd, so... Yeah, that's another thing to mention there. Uh, what else? Uh, Kishmish Social Media Services. All right, so this is actually a restaurant. This is actually a restaurant. Um, this is a restaurant, and I met the owner at a networking event. So once again, like networking events, uh, just being out and about, even in restaurants or, or being at the gym, starting conversation with people, um, stuff like that. As an agency owner, you don't know where the next client could come from offline. You know, um, so always just keep that in mind. Like you, you can find clients from everywhere. Like I remember I would just start up conversations with like just people next to me at a restaurant. Like if I saw that they ha were, um, had business manager open, uh, if like, you know, just kind of from like all, you can find clients from all different directions. It's kind of what I'm saying. That's the beauty of being an agency owner is you get referred to like the amount of times, you know, the amount of times in, um, 2017 where I was like, you know, people were like, Oh, you should meet this like marketing whiz kid. Or like, even now, like people are like, Oh, he's the marketing like guy. Like he could really help your business with this or that. So you need to understand in agency, um, although you should never rely on it a lot, you know, a lot of business will definitely come from referrals. Uh, so even if you stop doing outreach, which obviously I never recommend you do, even if you stopped all your external efforts and you just got really good results for your clients, just kind of naturally the compounding effect, um, through friends, business partners, naturally just in life, you're going to end up with a good amount of clients. Um, so, uh, we've got an amazing restaurant, blah, blah. Uh, unfortunately, it's never the best product or service that wins. You are right there, Eman. Uh, 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 old age ads don't work. People flip through the ads on magazine. They skip forward on their TiVo boxes. They don't look at billboard ads. Um, all right. Social media. Now it's not enough just to have great content. Uh, oh, okay. So I flex on them with my uh, influencer connections, which by the way, I, I didn't really have any at the time. I just, you know, I, I was like, I, you know, I just knew that I could get them, like I could get them in for free dinners and stuff like that. So I didn't really have any connections, but I knew I could get some. <laughs> That's insane reach. They get a free dinner and we get free advertising that has much better return than if we went old media route. I just knew there was a, I knew that there was some broke, broke influencers that like literally will go to a place for like, if they could go with them and their girlfriend for like, and just get a free dinner and post it on their story. Um, yeah, so uh, blah, blah, social proof. Um, uh, okay. Let's see. I have some more good news. Okay. So I remember we met, we met in person and I was like, he asked what the price was and they actually had an agency at the time and their agency, <laughs> I don't know how like some agencies can like even survive off this amount of money, but like their agency was quoting them 500 pounds a month. And they were like, how much would you do it for? And I was just like, 400 a week. And it was just like a flash thing. Like I had no idea. Like it was just like a, I was just kind of put on the spot. Uh, 
I have some more good news. I quoted you 400 pounds a week for the management of your Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, as well as the photos and videos I'll be taking on a weekly basis with that. Well, that, that was a very, that was very off the cuff quote. After breaking down the hours, it will only cost 250 a week uh, to come on board as a restaurant's marketer and photographer. All right, awesome. Oh, and here is, this is terrible. I will work 10 hours a week for Kashmir, five of those hours, blah, blah. The remaining five hours will go towards. So 10 hours a week. So, oh no, even, oh, this is, this is so cringy to look back at. So 250 a week with 10 hours of work leaves me at 25 pounds per hour for what is very specialized work. I, once again, I flex on him with uh, the fact that I charge 200 for videography an hour. Um, the service charged five days before the beginning of the month, which you are paying for. I also offer a very generous discount if you decide to come in and stay on for longer. So if they stay on for three months, I give them a 15% discount. I actually still do this with clients, although I give them 10% if they pay up front for three months. And after that, that's just like, they can do that, but I, I don't offer any other discounts after that. But if I, they decide to commit to six months, you can get 30% discount. Wow. All right. Wow. Wow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that last page was the funniest where I try to justify my price like by hourly rate at, you know, talking about how when, for, you know, in, in all fairness, it's very specialized work. So, um, oh man, this is just so, so, so entertaining and so funny to look back at. I hope you guys are enjoying this and getting some value from it as well. Um, yeah, just never try to break down hourly what you're like, what you're worth or like how much you're working or like, cause the thing, it doesn't matter how much you're working. It just matters. Are you getting them the result that they want? You know, like if your client, if your client is ever dumb enough to ask you how, and how much hours, how much work are you going to do? Just go, if it takes me a hundred hours, I'll do it in a hundred hours. If it takes me one hour, I'll do it in one hour. The only, the only thing that I can promise you is that you, I will work to get the result that's intended. You know, so I say, I kind of say the same thing to, you know, people in my life or, you know, I, even, even uh, my team, like technically there's the set amount of hours or whatever, um, that they're meant to work a week. But if they do it in, in less time or it takes more time, like I don't mind. The only thing that it care, it matters to me is, is it done? That's the only thing that matters. I don't care how long you spend on it or trying to justify how much you worked or your value by the amount of hours you work. That doesn't matter to me. So, um, yeah, just another thing, like you can just see so many rookie mistakes here. And in those four proposals alone, I hope you have, you know, this is, this is coming out to be a very sort of raw, uncut video um, with a lot of ums and ahs, so I don't want to let this go on any further, but you can just see an uh, uh, agency owner that has no guidance, and I had no guidance at this point. I had no guidance. I had no direction. I had no one to tell me this is what you should, what you shouldn't say. This is the, this is the value proposition that you should press on because this actually matters to the business owner. And this is the stuff that you should just disregard because it doesn't help you sell the client. It doesn't deliver any added value or extra value to the client. So yeah, ladies and gents, this is looking back at proposals between August of 2016 and uh, the last one was December of 2016, I believe. Um, so yeah, you know, that, that's the thing. That, that's the thing that just, this is why I love having an agency so much is just year on year you learn you learn, you improve every aspect of yourself as an agency owner. Um, and every year that you have your agency, it builds on itself because you get better and better results. Year on year, you're gonna inevitably get better and better results for your clients. You're gonna get more and more referrals. You're gonna solidify, at, uh, solidify yourself as an expert for your niche. And things just get easier and easier year on year. I'm telling you right now, I've seen it. Usually it's after that one, 12 to 18 month mark having an agency just becomes so light. It just feels so easy. That doesn't mean you don't have to put in the work or you don't have to continue to do all the things that got you to that successful point. But there's just, it's hard to explain. I think I mentioned it before in another video. Like it, just something happens. There's this switch that happens and you just, you just get it. You, you, you know, you just get it. Like you've just had enough reference experience to get it. You feel confident that you can deliver your services and you're starting to get a lot of inbound and referrals because of the track record that you have. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I uh, hope it was quite amusing for you. Uh, a lot of the stuff I look back at and cringe on, but as I said, you know, we all start somewhere and, and this was my starting point. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.